So good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us for today's live. Uh, welcome, welcome to you to Union Soul Cafe. Every Friday, um, we're going to be here talking about a topic related to spirituality. Today's topic is about spiritual structures. And before we go further, I would like to introduce, I would like my co-host to introduce himself to you. Uh, uh, and me, my name is Anupama. Um, sorry, we started a bit late because we were having a little bit of a connection issue. Um, I had power outages where I am, I'm in India, and that was sudden. So made a new choice to connect with God deeply and have God flow through and the power is restored. And Renato, our fellow host, is also having a few internet connection issues, which is why he's not here at the moment, but he will be joining us. And I would like Casey to introduce himself to. Hi, um, I'm Casey Kelly and um, you know, that's, it's very interesting that we're talking about the building structures and we're also thinking about Wi-Fi issues. And because we can, we recognize um, through video calls and, and um, watching church online is valid. And it, but the, you know, the one of the things is I struggle with is how stability. Mm. So we'll get into deeply because I want Renato to go next. Welcome, Renato. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, I just had a um, connection block here. My Wi-Fi just disconnected, but now we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, po the power is gone again here. We're back on inverter. So, but we shall proceed and choose to move forward with God. Yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Casey, that was a brilliant topic you brought up about stability in the structure. Would you like to talk more about that? It's, it's very interesting. Um, how to, when I think about online, I thought it's, it's not a building structure, but God is always there. And then we want to enjoy Wi-Fi. Is that means I'm thinking, so does that mean building structure is somehow better than online? And of course, we're heading to the direction of hoping to have an actual building structure. And I'm not sure if any of you noticed, um, Daniel, Dylan, and Deanna, Deanna talked about um, the prophecy that they received from Jeff about how they're going to have a church, the actual church. And I'm like, that is a wonderful thing. But at the same time, online is still valid as much as the actual building structure. So in my experience of growing up, when I always said God is always around me, but that on the other hand, sometimes I feel more God's, I used to say this, I used to say I feel more God's presence at the church as if it's, he's not in anywhere else. And that's, and that's something interesting. Why, why is that? Is it because the church is tangible? I mean, there's nothing wrong with the church. It's like stained glass, gorgeous stained glass is so pretty. But why do I feel more God's presence in an actual church setting? It's not like when I leave the same thing with the telephone thing you know, during the prayer discussion. It's like, by God. But with the building structure, you're leaving out the door like, okay, my mom is the pastor and she did the benediction and then we end it and we leave the church building and done with it. I mean, did I leave God behind? No. <laughs> No one really leaves God behind. It's not like God is right in the church. Yes, you're, you're absolutely right. But that is something that 
we are taught to believe in growing up that we have to go to the special place to receive uh, that special connection from God and um, be it the church or the temple or any structure that denotes that particular religion that you follow. It, it kind of conveyed to us that God is there. And that's also probably why we, we, we thought, okay, God is only there. He's not anywhere else. So, you know, um, only when you pray, you pray your prayer in the temple or in the place of worship works. It doesn't work anywhere else. That's kind of a, that's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a belief that a lot of people still do have. You know? But like you said, it's not true because God is everywhere and God is in the place of worship, but God is everywhere if you choose to connect. And like we saw today, we, when we chose to connect, God showed up in terms of the Wi-Fi connection or the, or the power connection just re-emphasizing the fact that I am everywhere. There is nowhere that I am not. So, Renato, would you like to add something to this? Yes, I, I remember when I was going to the church when I was child and teenager, there was that um, collective belief that God is in the church because of the communion. Like everyone was going to the church to feel God's presence. Now, like we are going to the church to feel God's presence, to be everyone united with God. So I remember when, when I was not going to the church, people, was, people were judging me like, oh, Renato is, is away from God because he, he's not coming to the church. So the church was like a place if I need God. Always the needness. If I need God, I go to the church. I can pray and I can do everything for God inside the church. So when you leave the church, it doesn't matter. At least you are going to the church three times a week, four times a week to find God. And people, some people have this belief that if you're not going to the church, you are away from God. But that's not true. We connect to God. When we wake up, when we uh, go for a walk, when we meet friends, when you go to work, eat all the time because God never leaves us. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And that is something I, I, I resonate with too, what you said about, uh, for me, it's the temple, of course. It's only when we go to the temple and offer something to God that only then God is pleased with us and will give us what we want. But then again, the question is about, you know, uh, being uh, doing this just to please God to get something, you know, and going to going to the places of worship, and so by that logic, if I don't go, then I am not in God's favor. I am going to suffer. I am going to face hardships, and then that kind of gets ingrained in the mind somewhere, and you think that oh my God, this has happened because I didn't go to the temple, I didn't go during this festival, I didn't offer this puja, and now God is upset with me. But what I realized is, um, if you limit God's presence to one place, then you are creating that own limit for yourself. And that opens up then, you know, the thought process that, okay, so if God is not only in the temple, where else is God? And like we were saying, God is everywhere. Like in the morning, like you said, you, you said, Renato, when you wake up in the morning, when you meet somebody, um, you know, or when you think about God, God is right there. Because God is in every one of us. And like you mentioned, Casey, about it, online is also important. Like we've had the Church of U U uh, U Union sermons had and still have online. Our church is an online church and it's as powerful, you know, uh, and the, or may, may, maybe more powerful because of the, of the, of the message we, uh, we have to share with the world. But, and we are going into making a, like, like a physical structure, have a physical church too, but till then the online church is just as powerful and God is there too. 
you know, and we have people connecting from all over the world, which may be something that uh, may be a little limited when you have a physical structure, but yes, online is as powerful, God is there too. So it's, it's good to transcend that limiting belief that you can only have God if you do so-and-so thing and in this particular place. Like in, in our culture, we have this um, belief, therefore, that stems from that, that we must visit XYZ place once in our lifetime to get the ultimate favor of God. You know? And a lot of people, when they're not able to do that, that becomes this big regret for them. But, oh my God, I don't think I'll be able to, or I don't know if I'll be able to do it again. Have you have you all ever faced something like that? That this it, it is a beautiful thing to go see these to go see the structures and to uh, to visit there because yes, we will talk about that. The vibration is different. But have you ever housed a feeling of say regret that you couldn't do something and therefore felt like oh you know I'm upset and God's going to be upset with me because I I couldn't do this. It's, it reminds me, um, it's not my own personal, but it's more of a, um, the past history. Um, I'm in seminary and I learn a lot of Christian history and Jewish history. And one of the big thing is there's this belief that you can only, one can only connect with God in a temple specific and um, in a Jewish room to Israel. And when that, when that temple got destroyed by the, um, I think, Assyrian or Babylon, I get them mixed up, by the way, so don't, you can look it up and research on it. It's called Zion Theology, it's Z-I-O-N, Zion Theology. And that belief just got us right there in the temple, not anywhere else. So when that temple got destroyed by the outsiders, the people just fell apart and it's like, where's, we gotta rebuild the temple because God is right there. And that's why it's like this idea of like, they need to give something to God or protect, like protect God, you know, it's like containment. And that's, and that was happening like, BC, 750 something BC. And that pattern similar to what happened today when um, when the church got caught on fire or any of it, natural disaster. Oh, Notre Dame, that's a perfect sample. Notre Dame got burned down and it was, and people are paying a lot of money to rebuild it. I mean, that's a great thing. It's just, it's like, have they really think through why, why they wanted to rebuild it so quickly? I mean, it's more than just about history and the beauty that is great. It's just, it's something that we really need to think about it. It's, it's, is it really? Is it really about the history and beauty? It could be about um, how they feel, how they experience in a Notre Dame. Yes. And they feel like, oh, I will not get that experience anywhere else. Mm. I think, I, know it's, I mean, I've never been there. And when I found out that it got burned down, the part of me feel like, oh no, well, I get the experience, what my mom experienced when she visited it there. And it's kind of that, it's like as if experience is That's tangible, it. not the same. That kind of regret that, oh, I didn't get to, I may not get to experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do, do we need to have that regret if we don't? You know, that's, uh, that's what we were talking about. You know, that it, Because God is everywhere. You know, it's okay. It's really okay if you're not able to visit the places that are considered as the holy shrines of, you know, where, uh, where people believe God is. 
So you can have, God is in the temple of your own heart. But from that, let's look at also, why did these structures come about? Why do, why do people want to have a shrine to God? Because that is where, these, where all these uh, spiritual structures have come from. So what, what do you feel as why do people want to have a particular place where they can offer prayer and remember God and stay in that space? I do think it's because, you know, in the Twin Flames universe and the Church of Union, um, we are experiencing heaven on earth. And these people, they believe that heaven is inside the church or inside the temple. They believe that outside the temple, outside the, the, the church, it's, it's just hell. So they want to escape the hell by going to the temple or the, or the church. But what we are doing here is living heaven everywhere because God is everywhere. We are not separated from God. I think that's the that's why people um, try to chase God inside the temples. Yeah, that's true. And that's also why we have an online church so that you don't have to limit yourself to, you know, God being in, in, in any physical structure far away from you, unreachable, especially in this time of, you know, the pandemic where we couldn't really step out and uh, couldn't really um, tra travel to any of those places. Um, it's been like a worldwide upheaval to remind people that, you know, wherever you are, you can offer whatever you want, you know, and God will still receive it. I also wanted to talk about, you know, um, a lot of, like you mentioned, uh, Notre Dame, uh, a lot of importance has been given to the to the way the physical structure must look, you know. Um, so we've, uh, I remember in an uh, earlier discussion, we kind of touched upon this topic where a lot of, um, you know, gold leaf design or elaborate carvings, um, or, you know, elaborate paintings are put into the spiritual structures. You know? Uh, have you experienced that, seeing that in any of the structures that you have visited for prayer, um, you know, seeing the elaborateness of the place of worship, the details that have gone into, uh, gone um, into, it, into the making of it? I can think of a good example. Um, one is where some cities, uh, not all, but it is saying that whatever the church is built in that time frame, it has to be the tallest than any other buildings. The, the temple part has to be the tallest. It's like over all, all the, yeah. Where the bells are and the main. The crosses and some, I mean, in the, that church Christianity church setting, okay. it's. It has to be the, whatever that time frame when it's built, it has to be the tallest. Mm -hmm. And then as time goes on, the other buildings become taller than that, and that's still valid. But, but mm -hmm. that's what my mom told me when I saw this church in a small town. And where I saw the temple looks the tallest. And I was like, why the, the building part is so low while the temple is, and where the cross is so high? And it's like the biggest. And my mom said that that's because it has to be the tallest. And I was like, Is there a reason as to why it needs to be the, ta the tallest? Well, first, uh, um, at first I thought it was because it, we're trying to prioritize God as the first. And okay. it's yeah, as physically that we prioritize God as the first. Mm -hmm. And secondly, if someone who is outsiders, uh, trying to find a place and mm -hmm. obviously to, to have a cell phone or map and in a town and look for a cross and go straight there. Mm -hmm. That's also um, because that's 
generally where the bells, the church bells are, like when the bells ring, the sound can travel more when it's the tallest. So more people can get to hear if they are not in the, you know, inside the church or around it. So that's why the spires are generally uh, much taller than the main frame of the building or the other buildings in the vicinity so that the sound can travel around. That's one reason, but I also like what you spoke about that, okay, it's showing that the house of God is right here and anybody can see it wherever they are, right? And bringing people, uh, guiding people towards that. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Renata, do you have a similar experience of, you know, uh, seeing the structures or understanding why they are, why they look the way they do? Yeah, we really resonate what uh, Casey Kelly said, because in Brazil there are many churches, Catholic churches, uh, it's the same here in the UK, and usually they are tallest than all the buildings. Not the modern ones, but if you consider the old villages, for example, always the tallest. And yeah, I remember when I was younger, I lived in a place very historical in Brazil. And every 15 minutes or every half an hour, we could um, hear the, the bell. And I had that feeling of like, Time to go to the church. Is I remember that sound brought me so much, so much peace. Some people they don't like, but many people they feel peaceful because of this bell, because it reminds um, uh, God. Oh, uh, what's the name? Purity, you know, these things. Yeah, I really res resonate with that. That's very nice. Yeah, we have a commonality there with the with the bells. We have that in our uh, in in our Hindu pujas too. Like at the end of the puja is always a lot of the bells are rung, kind of like to you know raise the vibration to chase out anything that's not uh, aligned and to bring in the good vibes. So that definitely is something that you know that that happens in in far grander and with more with more with more pomp and splendor at a temple rather than at home but yes that that is one common factor that we do have with the churches and the uh, temples and yeah and i think in a way um like you said that that sound that feeling that it inspires um yes I do feel that that's also a reason why people desire to visit a spiritual structure, you know, Be um, because, uh, and that's what I meant, like we can talk about the vibrations of the place in, in, in this part. So have you experienced that when you walk into a church, even if it's been after like 10 years or 20 years, have you felt a difference in yourself when you visit anything, like whether if you if you visited a church or a temple or a mosque or any place of worship. You yeah, I was going to, I was going to tell you now because uh, there are some old cathedrals that they they look quite dark inside, and some of them they have have like a opera in the background. And it's a very like cold place. And if it feels like very sad, like a sadness with peace at the same time. And for me, it, it felt like this sadness, this silence brings peace. So the feeling was like a peaceful sadness, something like that. And people try to connect to God or the angels through the sadness, through the pain they are they are experiencing, the suffering, and they go to the church, they cry because that environment feels quite sad. Yeah, I remember when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, I had this experiencing. 
Oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. But yeah, I do un I do understand. Yeah, I when you're saying that, I have felt that with some places and I didn't feel like visiting there anymore. Because it it, it didn't feel right somewhere within. Yeah, because like you uh, said, like sadness is not what God is about. God is always about peace, yes, but joy and love. Hmm, that's interesting. What about you, Casey? Have you felt a different vibration in a place of worship when you visit um, it? I think I have a different experience because yeah, um, in the past, uh, all the churches, it's actually my mom being a pastor. Mm -hmm. So it feels, I, I enjoy my mom's sermons. And the only thing is, it feels a little bit of slightly separation. And because, or some other times that I just come to church because I had to, it's more of a no choice. Some cases, not every, and other times I enjoy one day and um it's like like there's one point I made a choice to abandon myself so the only time I don't feel abandoned myself is why I attend a church it's just to feel closer to God and that was before knowing the truth that God is everywhere and that's why I describe it how leaving God behind in the church. And because I was actually abandoned myself. And another factor is um, I visited mosque once and just for, um, for the purpose of exploring other religion of cross-cultural. And I'm in a female body, a divine masculine and female body. And one of the wool in Moscow, I have to have a head covering. And, and um, I remember to feel covered up and more sacred and, and as if a female body is a sacred thing. And, and of course, uh, and I asked the question of what, how does that apply for transgender people and that that's a whole different topic. But another thing um, I feel that synagogues, synagogues, the language is, Hebrew language is beautiful. And, and it's like you pointed out when I ordered about the music. And um, it's beautiful and I resonate in some ways. And then other times meditation settings um, in a specific prayer room. It's, at college, we have a we had a prayer room that's cross intercultural religion, interreligion, and um, it's where we cannot wear our shoes on, and it's it's because of a sacredness space, the regulation rules, and it somehow made me feel secure and like I I'm doing it because I'm doing it for God if that makes sense. Absolutely. And that is something that, again, we have in common with our temples. We're not allowed to wear shoes inside the temple uh, because it is a, a sanctuary where the idol of God is placed. And uh, initially, I didn't understand why we need to take off our shoes. Like, why would God not want us to wear our shoes inside? Or why, like, the men and women had to stand in different lines? Or, uh, you know, why um, women were not allowed in the temple at certain times? So, um, but as I grew up, I kind of understood. Once I understood, I, I, I started feeling this, like, why do I need to go to a temple to, to connect with God? You know? And I notice that in every temple that I visited or in a church, I haven't been inside a mosque because uh, I grew up in a Muslim country. So I know 
uh, the prayers and I used to love listening to the prayers and the same thing with the mosque, the, the minaret is very high so that people all, all around can hear the call for prayer. Same like in a church. So do you see there are a lot of similarities in, this, in the spiritual structures in terms of the height of the height where the bells are, the, the sanctum, you know, keeping it clean because it's the house of God. But what, um, what I wondered was in all the temples, like why is the idol of God placed in this little room where you can just observe from a distance? Most places you can't go much closer than that. And that's what made me look into temple architecture in a way. And uh, once I read that, that, then it made a lot more sense to me about our Indian temples. I'm not sure if the architecture is the same for the other religions, but seeing that we have similarities, it probably is. So for, uh, for Indian temples, the alignment of the structures is aligned with our chakras. You know, so it's like how we are, how our spine is aligned. It's all in one column. And so the entrance and the north, you know, so it's kind of where you enter and how you go around. So you always go around in a clockwise direction. You don't go anti-clockwise. You know, that's how you do. And if you make a, make a misstep, you don't trace your step back. So you complete and then do the next round. And the idol is kind of in the center of this. Not exact center, but somewhere close to the entrance, not towards the far end, somewhere in the middle. And uh, yes, temples are also, um, like we're not allowed to wear shoes inside. The inside is always very clean, very well maintained. Um, and there's a lot of uh, chanting and you know we light the lamp, so there's like the fire. The fire burns within, in the sanctum, and uh, the vibrations of the chanting. And any time a special uh, puja or a, or an offering is done, the bells and the the blowing of the conch shell, all that raises the vibration. And what used to uh, stand out for me was there were particular places where I felt the vibration going up. You know, like uh, I would feel it in my heart or I would fe feel it in my belly. And I'd be like, what, you know, what, what is this wonderful sensation that I get when listening to the bells or listening to the prayers and the final part with the, you know, the lamp uh, being lit and, you know, observed, being uh, uh, moved in front of the God. So... Like I said, it's about the chakras. And what was most interesting is that the place where the God is, is the space of our, it's called a Garbha Griha in Hindi. And Garbha means womb. And Griha is the home. So the home, that is where God is in the temple, in the womb, which is the home of God. And that struck me that, oh my God, but isn't a womb in a woman? You know, but, and it was so amazing that that's where they place the main idol. And that's where everyone points to when worshiping. And that's where the, mo that's this most holiest place in the temple. And uh, it, it is coinciding with our sacral chakra, which we know for men and women is the center of creation. And it made sense that that's where they place God because we co-create with God. You know? And that's why everything is, and the entire structure is kept clean because that is how our body structure internally should be maintained. So it was kind of a lesson for us on, you know, God is within and yes, you visit this, but as you visit a structure, it's like you're visiting the own temple of, you know, what you have been given by God. And it's driving home again that you see God is right in the center of creation inside you, not anywhere else. And that made me feel like, oh my God, if this is the truth, then, then my own body houses God. I don't really need to go. It's okay if I don't go anywhere looking for God. It's okay if I do everything 
at home when I need to. And it's all right if I do visit the places when I want to. You know, there is no compulsion, so I don't need to have any regret. And uh, it also brought me to the point of, you know, women are sometimes not allowed in the temple at those times, but it's a, it's a big clash, right? If the God is housed in the womb of the temple, then it just shows how significant that space is to God. You know, not just for women, even for man, it is in the sacral that the seed of creation is created. You know, and same for the, 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 the woman in the sacral is where creation continues. So it just, it's like the temples in a way came about just to remind people of everything that is holy about everyone. Yeah, Lisa just made some comment here. She said, God is in the temple of your own heart, which is beautiful. And also she said about the sadness, uh, like equals peace, it's an illusion. And also with COVID-19 lockdowns causing people to worship online, people are worshiping without a physical structure. Do you really need, do you need a physical structure in order to worship? She's asking. Yeah. I guess that's what we already uh, like just said, right? That we have the online church, so it's not necessary, but sometimes people do want that physical structure too, to have that connection with God. Like, and while it's a good idea, it's not like, a, it's not a mandatory anyway. What do you feel, both of you? It's good to have a physical structure, but it's not necessary to always be look for God there. Yes. It's really is what the point is about this is not to leave God behind in the structures. Yeah. It's not to say structure is terrible idea or send the wall message. Not it's good. not about that. It's the way I see the we do, just like a puppet for Daniel and, and Dylan and Deanna, um, Church of Union is going into a direction of having actual physical structure. Yeah. And, and I cannot imagine how gorgeous. And, and it's really, it's, I think it's more of about community among people. Mm -hmm. Not only, um, of course, God is everywhere, but I feel like the stretch is there because I actually want to meet um, many of you face to face. Exactly. Yeah. And That's it'll be great, you know, to, but right now I'm just unable to coordinate that and yeah. rest of your opportunities. So. Yeah. In this pandemic, this has been. Uh, this has been a setback in a way that we can't get to meet people. But yes, having a physical structure is a wonderful place for people of the same uh, belief and you know thought process to meet and to get to know each other and to connect. You know? And that's also something we have in temples when people get together, that uh, that is also something that raises the vibration, the connection and people get together and sing you know, like you have in the church, you have a choir. In the temple, we don't call it a choir. We call it more of a satsang, where people get together and they sing, sing, sing the bhajans. You know? So those are things that when you have a common structure as a place of worship to God, where everybody can come together, that is definitely a big plus. And that is when structures are really given that uh, you know, that decoration and that beauty of, uh, you know, like uh, you have intricate carvings, uh, you have uh, different designs, something more to attract more people or to keep, uh, you know, to, to help people when they meet together, to help them stay, be comfortable. So we have seats or areas where people can offer prayer together or in seclusion. 
good. It's good to have a physical structure, but what we were also saying is that at times, if you can't, it's okay, because like you said, said Casey, don't leave God in the structure. God is everywhere. Right. So that's, that's a good question. I remember when I was going to the church, um, when I was younger, many people were like, they had some attachment to their emotions because the environment, people were getting very emotional. They were not being really present with themselves. They were more like, oh, this environment is so powerful. God is here inside the church and everyone is crying. So people attach to that emotion. And Lizzie also commented here, one thing that stretches provided was a means uh, for community before we had technology to be together. Even if God is within the heart, we still need the community. And she also said, we can't really hear our voices sing together on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. It be that that's that's one thing that that being in a being in a structure gives us. And that is why we have our our, our physical church coming up. You know, a place where we can get together, uh, pray together, listen to uh, sermons together, you know, and then meet each other and talk to each other and sing too. <laughs> yeah, because now we have this new awareness of what is being present with God means. So even if we have the Church of Union like in physical place, now that's okay because now we, we know that it doesn't matter if you are in a physical place or online, we know how to be present with ourselves and God and people. Absolutely, absolutely. And that, that's what this entire discussion has been about, that it's okay, you know, you can still connect with God wherever you are, doesn't matter. And you don't have to be in any kind of regret or, sad, or sadness because God is within. And that's what structures also help to remind you that, yes, come and, you know, talk to me here, but also talk to me within the structure that I have given you already, you know, which is yourself. And talk to me all the time. I'm everywhere. That feels good. Do we have any more questions that people have asked? Or Yeah, Lissy made one more question, one more comment. But we can do everything else on Zoom. Also, I can be present with you who live in other countries. If there was a physical structure in one place, those of us connecting all around the world would not all be able to join those activities. Yeah. Which is why we have our Church of Union online and going to have a structure. So we have both. We're going to be having both of them. So. Hooray for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that is where, uh, you know, the traditional ways of uh, connecting with God are very different from the way that you can actually connect with God anytime. Good. Do you have anything else that you both would like to share about sp spiritual structures or any other ways of how to connect with God or any other experiences that you have? The first thing came to my mind, um, I think the reason physical structures are there to, I think of my own story, of my own experience, I feel like going in the, the stretch has kind of given me permission to actually connect with God. It's as if I separated from everything else when I could have um, truly connect with God in all areas in my life, in my seminary union, or in my school education, in the homework when I'm working on the papers. That's count as giving the gift to God. Yeah, that's true. So now we know that there is no separation from God anytime. Mm hmm I guess with that, um, I feel complete. 
Do you, uh, do you have anything more that you'd like to share? Or? Yeah, just something would you like to share. Um, mm -hmm. The moment in my life that I felt God so much, like more than ever, mm -hmm. was when I started to watch Church of Union, you know, the meditation, the card readings, and Jeff and Shelley, and now is uh, Daniel and Diana, uh, the sermon. And the discussion groups, I would say the discussion groups, they are so amazing. I feel more present with, with God and people in communion than I was feeling when I was going to the church in the physical place, or even the spiritual church. I went to some spiritual places like um, Alan Kardec. I don't know if you ever heard about it, about him. It's like uh, they do uh, some teachings and they do aura cleansing. I was going to this place when I was 21, 22, when I was my 20s. So the discussion group, I, I feel totally connected with people. Like you can feel this oneness. I love that you brought that up. That uh, in our church sermon, we have ev like everything. We have the meditation, a card reading, an introduction by the ministers, and then the sermon. And then, of course, after church, tea time. So it's like really a different structure bringing everyone together. The, the unionist structure. And that is, that's a very, uh, you know, wonderful thing that we have. Definitely. Right. So if anyone would like to share anything more or we can wind up for today. How do you feel? Do you feel complete? I feel complete. Casey, how do you feel? I feel, it feels complete, you know, that it's like, it's amazing. Um, first thing came to my mind, um, no one can really take your peace away. No, and your peace. That's what I any, desire. Yeah, and your peace is not in any particular place. Your peace is always within you, which is why wherever you go, your peace, if you're aware of it, travels with you. Now I finally feel complete after getting that, that awesome. thought popped in my head. <laughs> it's yeah. there for the reason. <laughs> Obviously, yes, definitely been divinely guided mm -hmm. so thank you both so much for today thank you everyone who, jo who joined us today um, I love that we concluded on talking about the pieces within us and the diversity that we have in our online church of union services so those watching please do join us every Sunday to you know to witness and experience the peace and the love in our church of union and the services that we have Thank you all, and uh, see you next week. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.